Hello everyone and welcome to the Well of Curiosity. So recently NASA teamed up with SpaceX to send a crew of astronauts to the International Space Station. SpaceX has long had an interest in sending people to Mars one day and that got me thinking, if you did venture out into our solar system what would the conditions be like, not just on Mars, but of any of the seven other planets that are orbiting the Sun along with our Earth? That is exactly what we are going to investigate in this video. So let us start in the middle of our solar system with the planet closest to the Sun, Mercury. Now just getting to Mercury is a tough task as it is the fastest orbiting planet in our entire solar system. So just getting a spacecraft there means traveling at just the right speed. Fast enough to catch up to Mercury, but not too fast because otherwise you might shoot straight past it and end up crashing into the sun. But even if you got it spot on, you would wish that you hadn't. There is no atmosphere on Mercury, so breathing, that's out of the question. But you wouldn't have time to worry about that because your more pressing problem would be the temperature. Mercury is so close to the sun that an average daytime temperature there is around 450 degrees Celsius, which is rather toasty. So you may be thinking, that's okay, I'll just land on the nighttime side. No big deal. But here's the problem. The atmosphere that we have here on the Earth acts almost like a blanket. It traps some of that heat that we get during the day so that we don't end up freezing during the night. But remember, Mercury has no atmosphere. Nothing to trap in the heat that it got during the day. So during the night, that heat rushes off into space and the temperature plummets right the way down to minus 170 degrees Celsius. So that's your choice. Be melted or be frozen. But still, at least you have a lovely grey landscape to look at in your few minutes there. So surely Venus would be a lot better. It's a lot closer to Earth, it's almost the same size, and it was known for many years as Earth's twin. Perfect! Except Venus turned out to be one of the more hellish places in our solar system. Unlike Mercury, Venus has an atmosphere, but it is incredibly thick, made mostly of carbon dioxide, with some lovely clouds of swirling, deadly sulfuric acid, which should make your descent down to the surface quite interesting. And when you do eventually get down to the surface, I hope that you are prepared. I said a moment ago that atmospheres normally trap heat. Now Venus's atmosphere is so thick it traps a lot of heat. And it has made the surface of Venus the hottest surface of any planet in our solar system, around 470 degrees Celsius. And that is all over the planet. But the atmosphere presents yet another problem. Now the air that's around you right now is pushing on you. You can't really feel it. The human body is designed to put up with it. But the pressure from the atmosphere on Venus is 90 times what you're experiencing right now. To get the same effect here on the Earth, you would have to dive nearly a kilometer below the surface of the ocean. So basically, you wouldn't have that much time to look around at the scorched volcanic landscape on Venus before you were cooked and crushed at the same time. Uh, if that's what you were aiming for, then by all means carry on. But if it doesn't quite take your fancy, let's take a look at our next planet, Mars. Now we are starting to move further and further away from the Sun. Mars lies a lot further away from our star than our own Earth. So instead of the scorching temperatures from our star, brace yourselves for the chilly environment that you can find on the red planet. The average temperature here is around minus 65 degrees Celsius, which is similar to the temperatures that you would get in Antarctica. Except on Mars, there is barely any atmosphere, so breathing is once again out of the question. What little atmosphere there is can often cause huge dust storms to kick up that can sometimes cover the entire planet, blocking everything from view, which is enough to ruin anyone's day. And that very thin atmosphere has one more horrible trick to play. The atmosphere we have on Earth not only keeps us warm, not only keeps us breathing, but it absorbs some very dangerous radiation that comes out of the sun. 
that would damage not only us, but a lot of the creatures that we share our planet with. On Mars, the atmosphere is so thin that a lot of that radiation makes it down to the surface. So that is yet another problem that you would have to deal with. Despite all of this, Mars is probably the best chance we have of landing humans on another planet. But whoever does end up going there in the future will have to bear all of these challenges in mind and figure out a way to overcome them. So far, we haven't had much luck when we've been looking for other planets to land human beings on, but it's about to get so much worse as we prepare to take a look at Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. Now, there's enough room inside Jupiter for over 1,300 planet Earths. So looking for space to land really isn't that much of a problem. But that's where the good news ends. Jupiter is a gas giant, and as far as we can tell, virtually the entire planet is made from gas. There is a very strong possibility that there isn't a solid surface that we could land on. We believe that the heat and the pressure from the surrounding gas has turned the core into liquid. But let's say that there is a solid bit in there somewhere to land. Now that solid bit will be somewhere underneath all of that swirling gas, so you would have to fly through Jupiter in order to reach it. It would be one of the roughest journeys in history. Jupiter's swirling gas is full of storms, with huge bolts of lightning and winds that can reach speeds of over 400 miles an hour. Now because Jupiter is so massive, it has a very strong gravitational pull, and that gravity is going to pull you further and further in, where the surrounding gas will become so thick that it will crush whatever spacecraft you were in. But even if you survived all of that, you would reach a core that we believe is around 24,000 degrees Celsius, which is about four times the surface temperature of our sun. So that's a firm no for landing on Jupiter. Uh, but what about Saturn? I mean, you've got a beautiful approach to Saturn past its wonderful ring system, uh, but actually landing there is a similar story to what we had just a moment ago at Jupiter. Now there may be a small core in there somewhere, whether it's solid or not is, is again not fully understood. Once again, you would have to fly through a turbulent atmosphere wrapped with storms. Once again, the pressure will be ramped up the further into the planet you would go. The core of Saturn isn't believed to be as hot as the core of Jupiter, but that 11,000 degrees Celsius, it's still no picnic. So I imagine that you would pass on Saturn too. Uh, which leaves us two more planets, Uranus and Neptune. Now, both of them are fairly similar in appearance, and as it turns out, their landing experiences would probably be pretty similar too. Now, both of these planets are believed to have small rocky cores. Yay! Uh, but your main problem is how far away they are from the sun. Now, Uranus is about 1.8 billion miles away from the sun. Neptune is about 2.8 billion miles away, uh, which means both of them are incredibly cold, with temperatures in their upper atmospheres that dip well below minus 200 degrees Celsius. So there is your immediate problem, the freezing temperatures. Uh, but on Neptune, it is a little bit warmer on the inside, about 5,000 degrees warmer. Now this heat, we think, drives huge storms in its atmosphere with winds that can exceed 1,500 miles an hour, the most powerful winds in our solar system, which would fling your poor frozen body around with ease. So there's nowhere quite like home. All of the other planets out there are quite prepared to melt, cook, freeze, crush or irradiate you, and they are totally unsuitable for human beings. But we shall see what companies like SpaceX have up their sleeves in the future. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this tour of our solar system to find out what would happen to us poor little humans if we ever did try to land on another world. 
If you have enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more. And if you do have any ideas for videos that you would like me to make in the future, then please leave them down in the comments. I do hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.